So this story um, comes from uh, my good friend, Mark Viola, very funny comedian, Mark Viola. You should check out his YouTube channel, uh, support what he does. Uh, he's another fellow touring comedian and uh, 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 one of my closest friends uh, in the world. And, uh, so we talk a lot and he sent me this article about, uh, Ohio schools, uh, basically said that they can't teach yoga in school because a hundred and some odd, I think it was 105. I might be wrong. It might be 150. I might be getting those numbers dyslexically confused. Uh, but over a hundred pastors basically said that, uh, they can't teach yoga in schools because it is a religion. Um, and, uh, and so the schools caved, they bent at the knee and they said, you know, freedom of it's, it's, it's a, a first amendment issue. We can't force kids to, to take part in this religious thing. Right. Uh, and, and they make all these claims about like, well, they're not teaching intelligent design and now they're teaching this Eastern religious philosophy thing. And, it's not good for the kids and blah, 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 blah. Like they went on and on about all this shit. All of a sudden separation of church and state is important to, uh, to these churches. Now, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, well, you gotta, you gotta do the church and state thing. That's a fucking thing you gotta do. You know, it's important. You can't just not fucking separate the churches and the States. Cause that's, if you do, then the Muslims and the Hindus are going to come in here and they're all going to eat your children while you sleep. That's just like, that's like a thing that, you know, because, because Jesus, I guess, is that's the reason. They can, we'll just we'll just throw the Jesus blanket reason for everything that we're doing, and everything's fine, uh, and that justifies all the weird, c crazy shit that we believe in. But uh, so they wrote a letter, right? They wrote a letter. So I, I wanted to read the letter uh, with you guys because I think the letter's kind of awesome. Uh, in, in, in a, ter in a terrible, awful way, it's, it's hilarious and, uh, uh like fucking weird. Anyway, let, so, so let's, let's read through this. Uh, it says, uh, dear state and school officials, thank you for your dedicated students, uh, service to our students as leaders of the faith community in North central Ohio, we would like to bring to your attention the following concern. <gasps> oh, so cordial. It is our understanding that a form of Eastern religion called yoga is being proselytized during compulsory class hours in school district, school districts Clear Fork, Galleon, Lexington, Lucas, Mansfield, and Shelby. Yoga is not nearly a, uh, merely a external physical practice with purely physiological effect, but rather an internal spiritual practice advertised as being able to provide the power to change an individual and transform the world. Specifically, yoga's stretching and breathing component called asanas and pranayama in Sanskrit are intended to be spiritually transformative. Boy, what a terrible thing for children to learn. What an op to, to learn how to stretch and breathe Guys, that's crazy. If there's anything we can learn from the Christian nation that is America is you can't stretch and boy, howdy, don't breathe. Just uh, don't do it. <laughs> you guys, just uh, it, breathing can spiritually transform you. And that is bad. What you need is uh, breathe when you're told to so you can be good little listeners uh, and worker bees. Don't. Don't just be stretching and breathing. That's crazy. That's <laughs> spiritually transformative is like it's a bad thing. <laughs> the courts have repeatedly ruled that yoga and meditation are religious practices. Uh, so they, they start talking about some of these. In 1988, Arkansas case commonly known as Powell versus Perry. I've never heard of this case. But but so it's like I don't know how commonly known this is. <laughs> like Brown versus the Board of Education, that's a commonly known court case, right? Roe v. Wade, that's a commonly known. But I don't remember Powell v. Perry to be like a commonly known thing, right? Uh, anyway, so Powell Powell v. Perry concluded that yoga is a method of practicing Hinduism. Uh, yoga, I think, is part of Hinduism. It's not. It's not. Uh, it like. 
the definition of Hinduism, although that's the claim that they're making here. And that's the claim that they're saying that these um, these court cases are making about yoga, that it is um, that it's a religious practice. Like saying that yoga is a religion in and of itself is saying that eating the body of Christ is a religion in and of itself. Like it is a part of the ritual. Like you practice yoga as part of Hinduism. Um, and, you know, part of this thing, too, is like a lot of Eastern religions, uh, Eastern spiritualities, Eastern belief systems, whatever you want to call them, they kind of view religion and way of life starts to get a little blurred. You know, it starts to get a little blurred, um, especially I, I grew up Hindu, so I kind of know that because it is really a way of life. It is really a way that you uh, of, of how you live your life. Right. So there when you go through kind of like the bar mitzvah of Indians, um, it's called Punal. I did the whole thing. You get a thread. It proves that you're a Brahmin. And then you have to do like three different prayer rituals, uh, one at sunrise, one when the sun is at high noon and one uh, in the evening. And there are like I think there are certain benefits to why people chose to meditate and and, and there are religious rituals through this, but part of the religious rit rituals include breathing and self-reflection and meditation. And to me, meditation should be taught um, in schools. I think kids should learn how to meditate. And meditation is not a religious practice. Uh, I believe meditation is more of a spiritual practice. And it is a practice of, um, in, like, you, you're just looking within yourself and you're learning how to be still without constantly worrying about, you know, the, the state of the world. I have this thing. I have that thing. You can just kind of be still and be centered and be focused and be present in the moment that you're in. Um, so you're not as reactive as, as uh, you know, hyper, or, or rather, I guess, hyper reactive uh, might be the, the, the better way to say it. Um, so as this letter continues, uh, the 1995 Self-Realization Fellowship Church versus Amanda uh, Ananda Church of Self-Realization case labeled the Hindu-Yoga Spiritual Tradition as a religious tradition. In 1979, Malnick versus Yogi uh, case outlined transcendental meditation as a religion. Now, transcendental meditation, I think... To, from from what I've looked into about it, I'm not an expert in transcendental meditation or anything. Um, that to me is different than just practicing meditation, right? Like to you know to kind of focus on your breathing, to stay still, to be present in in the world that you're. That I I, I feel like transcendental meditation takes those some of those principles and goes a different direction with it. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't know if that, so again, it's like if, if they're, if they're saying that yoga and meditation is being applied in schools and they're claiming that that's, that's the religious aspect of it. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's the best case that they can make for it. Uh, especially with meditation, like saying that transcendental meditation is the, is a religion when it's not the same thing as like regular meditation, it kind of makes the, the case of these people a little murky. Anyway, uh, they continue. Uh, the practice of Eastern religion in the classroom during school hours is a form of coercion due to its mandatory practice. Uh, teacher, due to its mandatory practice, teacher authority and peer pressure. In fact, the endorsement of yoga is a violation of the First Amendment's Establishment Clause, which forbids the government from picking religious winners and losers and enforcing it as a choice. Without question, Eastern religion is a practice in conflict with the vast majority of those in our country, uh, whether from Judeo-Christian traditions or otherwise. Kind of, but I was coerced into having to deal with like Judeo-Christian norms we have to take Easter off, but I don't get Diwali off. I don't remember celebrating Ramadan when I was in school. We celebrate all the Judeo-Christian holidays. Isn't that isn't that a form of coercion? Isn't that normalizing Judeo-Christian traditional values within the school structure? That we have to observe these holidays, but not the holidays of any other religion? 
So if that is the case, then that means that no more Easter holidays, no more Christmas, you know, unless you're going to include fucking Hanukkah and Diwali and Kwanzaa and Ramadan and Eid and all of these other religious holidays, and you're going to incorporate, somehow incorporate those into your school calendar and offer it as, as like, this is a day off for everybody to maybe go s celebrate or learn or do whatever you want to do with that day. But you don't, you don't see that happening. And I was forced into, I was for coerced into doing that. Nobody fucking wrote a letter on my behalf for that shit. Nobody wrote a letter on behalf of the Jewish kids either for that matter, you know? So they go on. I think they're going to give, uh, yeah, this isn't the, we, we don't have much to go. Uh, back up here. Sorry, I lost my place there. Okay, after the effort, after efforts to contact school district regarding this issue, our findings list the following example of local Eastern indoctrination. In, to, in November 2016, Shelby Auburn Elementary holds assembly during school hours where yoga instructor gives religious instruction to children. That's making the case that, you know, it, it is it is a religion that yoga itself is a religion. Spring of 2017, Galleon Intermediate School permits yoga instructor to Im implement a student-focused religious program for one dozen students with attention, emotional, and behavioral issues. District pr uh, publicly plans to start religious program for the second nine weeks of the year. Again, um, they are making the claim that it's religious. They, the, the schools are not, and the yogis um, or, or the yoga instructor themselves are not. Unless they go in and tell you to worship the sun and the earth and whatever, like then maybe. But I, th th these are very vague claims of religious teachings in school. In November 2018, Shelby Auburn Elementary permits middle school student under the teaching supervision to give uh, religious instruction to kindergartners during bowing to the sun god Surya and using devotional praying hand poses. Now, this is another vague example. Yes, they're talking about the sun god uh, Surya there, but that could be a lesson. Was this a lesson in, in Hindu practices? Was this a lesson in um, uh, a... a uh, a yoga in a historical context or, you know, so it's just like this happened, you know, we learned about the crusades. We learned about Judeo Christian traditions. We learned about how, um, you know, the, the religiosity of certain uh, political figures in America, like the, is that teaching religion in school? Should that be barred? I mean, if you're going to teach religion as a historical context, um, I think that's totally fine. Um, because you should learn it because religion and the uh, decisions made by leadership throughout history based on religion, t religious teachings is important. But you don't teach religious philosophy, you teach religion as history, and that kind of changes things. In November 2018, Shelby Dowd's elementary permits religious instruction to be given to 75 third graders during gym class performing yoga poses. Uh, monthly religious instruction ensues. They keep they keep making the claim that this is all religious, and I I, I think they're kind of on shaky ground to begin with. Spring of 2019, Fork Belleville Elementary permits religious instruction to be given to a third grade class during homeroom involving devotional yoga poses and yoga mats. Yoga mats are not religious. Sorry. Uh, I'm dead. <laughs> they're just not, they're, they're not religious. That, that would be saying like incense are religious. That's, that's, that's like saying fucking wine is religious because it served a church. In October of 2019, Lucas High School permits religious instruction to ninth graders involving devotional yoga poses and yoga mats during physical education classes in November, 2019, they go on. 2020, uh, Lexington mother testifies to a uh, school board that her sons were pressured to participate in yoga activities without permission during class. Episodes cited including music teachers showing a video instructing third grades to do postures, bow to the sun god, uh, and use devotional prayer hands at the heart. 
uh, live skills, teacher showing video uh, discussing practice of yoga, of how to uh, collect life-giving forces of the universe to seventh graders on April 2018, of the language arts, teacher requiring sixth graders to perform daily postures, sal salute the sun god Surya, bow to the sun, and praying hands pose. According to mother, the teacher pressured the students by saying, you're not too cool to do this yoga. See, th that phrase to me when I first read it was like, it sounds like the poses make the kids feel silly because some of the poses can be silly, right? As I like, I've done a couple of these poses and they can be silly. Like they can look silly and goofy and you know, like your butt's in the air and you got to clench your bottom and stuff like that. And they're like silly words, you know, they're like fun, you know, kids are going to fucking giggle for it and stuff. Um, and you know, we're encouraged so much in society to be prim and proper and stand like this and do this and, and you got to stand straight and you know so it's like doing something a little bit different that's not pressuring to me i think that's getting these kids to be cool with trying something new um doing stretches and stuff like the sun pose itself yes in relig if you look at it in a religious context it can be attributed as a religious thing but as just a stretch and it's called the sun pose or bow like as a bow to the sun god or whatever like if it's just the name of it i don't know if that merits it to be a religion uh so uh in plain school district stark county parents took issue to the morning yoga routine for all 300 students involving a tibetan bell and yoga poses. The elementary school also had a mindfulness room featuring scrolls containing quotes by the Dalai Lama. Consequently, the school district took an appropriate action and discontinued the program in 2013. God forbid people learn that there's something outside Christianity. Holy fuck. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if we were a, a more well-rounded and well-educated society that wasn't so fucking close-minded? Holy shit, Ugh. the whole planet would probably explode. The second coming of Jesus might show up if we learn stuff. The implementation of Eastern religion yoga in public school is such a divisive issue that parents uh, in Georgia called, uh, called, called it into question, called into question the practice in Alabama as banned yoga in schools statewide. Fucking hell. Propos proponents of uh, Eastern religion refute claims yoga is not a religious activity. Basically, that that sentence is phrased weirdly. They're basically saying that they do say that it is. Uh, Subhas Trivari, professor at Hindu University of America and graduate of the prestigious Bihar Yoga Bharati University, commented that the simple immutable fact is that yoga originated from the Vedic or Hindu culture. Its techniques were not adopted by Hinduism, but rather originated from it. In fact, the American Yoga Association has advised against yoga for children under the age of 16 because postures can interfere with still growing bodies. That's fair. Um, I think if, you know, if schools want to implement like a yoga program or something like that, where they're doing some stretches, they should probably have like a certified yoga instructor to come in and do some of the stretches that, you know, kids can do that's not going to impede with their growing bodies. That's like probably the most rational sentence that this whole letter has. Um, even if yoga is, uh, is disputed as a form of religious practice, there is d little doubt on the effects of yoga. A study found that 62% of students in secular yoga uh, changed their primary reason for practicing. Most initiate yoga for exercise and stress relief, but uh, for many, spirituality become the primary reason for maintaining practice uh, of the study. Holy shit! They found something meaningful within it. Well, we can't have that. We can't have people finding meaning in things. We can't have something that transcends just exercise and uh, and better mental health practices to be like, I don't know, say a way of life. Boy, howdy, doesn't that sound dangerous? Boy, howdy, it would be like if somebody went to a certain place every Sunday for an hour just to listen to somebody talk uh, uh, every every single week on on time, 9 a.m., filed into a fucking room boy what does that sound like hmm what does that sound does it sound like a fucking church 
But that's a personal choice that they made, though. And this is making the thing that this is making the assertion that that will happen to people if they do yoga. No, it fucking won't. Additionally, in a separate study of mindful yoga retreat participants, D. N. Shapiro found that the longer term mediators were less likely to be religious monotheists and likely to be identify as Buddhist or with all religions. Oh, my goodness. They they might discover polytheism. You guys, they might discover that there is a different form of religion. And it's not just this one almighty authoritarian God that tells you to do what you need to do all the time without any fucking question. Holy balls. What are we going to do with this? While proponents of Eastern religion uh, allege yoga brings benefit to student practitioners, our, our, our biblical faith traditions um, bring just as many, if not more, scientifically proven benefits. Yet, ironically, in a nation of Judeo-Christian heritage, it is uh, school-sanctioned it, it is school sanctioned prayer, intelligent design curriculum, and the display of the Ten Commandments that are strictly prohibited from schools. All right. That is, they 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 just have a problem because it's Eastern philosophies. They wouldn't have a problem. I mean, this is hypocritical because that's what they want. The last statement just makes it look like, you know, um, they're they, it just shows how much of how how hypocritical they really are, right? Um, oh. It, if, if it was intelligent design and uh, all these Judeo-Christian practices and, this, and the prayer and all the, we'd, we'd totally be on board with it. But now that it's this thing, ah, fuck it. No way. No way. So the real question ends up being, is yoga a religion? And I think if the individual associates religiosity to the practice of yoga, then yeah, it's religious. It's a matter of personal opinion. It's not a matter of this definitive answer that it is. I think it's 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 what you get out of it, which is sort of a very Eastern philosophy is, hey, here's something that you could do. There's no real answer to what's supposed to happen um, when you do it. You get to figure that answer out for yourself. So there's a lot of like internal reflection there's a lot of self-discovery involved with a lot of Eastern philosophies. And that's just not something that I've seen Judeo-Christian religions offer or any sort of Western philosophy offer. In fact, a lot of Western philosophies are like, this is the way it is. This is the normal. This is how society operates. And if it's any different, then it's fucking bullshit. And we'll propagandize the shit out of it. And then we'll fucking tell people that if they do this, they're communists or Nazis. Huh? Bam. Boom. Done. Baby. Normal. Saved it. <laughs> Look, as an agnostic that grew up Hindu, um, I honestly find that uh, the breathing exercises are basically a doorway to mindfulness and help quell anxiety. Like I do a lot of the breathing exercises that I learned um, when I was practicing the religion of, uh, uh, of Hinduism. You know, so I still use those because I don't look at it as a religious thing for me. I look at it as a uh, as a way to kind of breathe in and breathe out and take more oxygen into my body, slow my heart rate, calm myself down a lot more, you know, uh, and, and kind of alleviate my stresses. I use it as a as a mental health tool, as you if, if you will. Uh, I do the stretches. I do some yoga poses when I do my, my stretches when I work out. And that's primarily so uh, I don't hurt myself because that can happen. That's something that, uh, that is, that is uh, a plausible within, um, <laughs> you know, doing, doing yoga and stuff like, or, or just exercising in general, you can, you can hurt yourself. Um, I used to do these as a form of religious practice and, uh, when I became an atheist, it kept me away from all of this because there was all of this religious connotation attached to it. And I was so vehemently against it. Like I hated it so fucking much. Um, and, uh, and I just like, 
steered away from it. And then once I started finding myself and finding out what my sense of self was, I was able to, um, I don't know, do something different with it. I was able to use it for a different purpose to, 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 to better myself as an individual um, and better my, not just my mind, but also my body. So I don't view it as a religious practice. I view it as a practice to help mental, mental and physical health. That's the benefits that I get from it. So it's a very personal thing. Um, so to me, I think these, these, these folks, these clergy that wrote this letter are, um, are making some false equivalencies. Go figure. Uh, that these religious people are making false equivalencies. <laughs> uh, you know, so the answer to that question is, it kind of depends, right? Like, it depends. What what does yoga mean to you? Uh, what does what does uh, these the, the breathing and the stretching mean to you? Is is it the same as what it means to me? It might not be. You might get something more spiritual out of it. You might get something. Um, deeper and uh, more connected to, you know, some sort of uh, 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 higher being or, or something along those lines. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But to say that that is a definitive answer, I think is uh, reckless. And I think kids should be taught how to meditate. Kids should be taught how to reflect, especially teenagers. Boy, howdy. Can they fucking learn uh, to take a minute to reflect and be less reactive. I know some fucking adults that can learn how to do that. To really be honest with yourself, to really look at a flaw in who you are as an individual and say, that is not cool. I kind of hate that I do that thing. And then not beat yourself up about it, but use it as a learning tool to say, hey, um, I'm going to try to be better. I'm going to correct this mistake and improve myself as a person. Eastern philosophies do teach that sort of stuff. It's not all about the religiosity behind it. So I, I, I think this is, um, in my opinion, a bit of a foolish, uh, foolish use of the clergy's time. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and you got to learn about global religions anyway, right? So again, if if yoga can be taught as a uh, as, within historical context, I think they're fine. Let's look at the comment. Jumping jacks and squats are Nazi practices. Yeah, should we stop doing jumping jacks and squats in schools? <laughs> Right. I mean, that's the thing is like there is physical benefit, you know, and, and better applications of this stuff. But people don't like to think that way. They 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 are very, very stuck in their in their belief systems. You know, I, I'd like to say that if I do have a religion, that it's curiosity and uh, and and learning more than um, any sort of like deity or anything. So, um, yeah, I just think that this is a. Uh, fruitless endeavor that they are that they are participating in to make the world an unnecessarily more closed off space than what it is. I think, especially now, kids need to learn more about Eastern principles and Eastern philosophies. That's what I think. I might be wrong, uh, but I but I feel like I'm not. Let's you know. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this clip. If you enjoyed this clip, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button, you hit the like button, make sure that you share this content out. Usually content like this, this anti-establishment comedy content is not uh, shown to as many people uh, as it possibly could be. It does get suppressed quite often. So uh, if you can hit that share button, get the word out there. Uh, and tell folks that you enjoyed this video. And if you want to be a part of a live virtual comedy show, the next live virtual comedy show, the next Citizen Revolution comedy show is going to be on May 22nd. Uh, tickets are available for that right now. And then they'll be, um, they'll be happening every Friday uh, at 9 p.m. So tickets are available for these shows at krishmohan.com. That's K-R-I-S-H. 
M O H A N dot com. And you got to get your tickets uh, because that's how I'm going to be able to send you the Zoom login information so you can attend the show and we don't get any unwanted visitors in the Zoom show. So, like I said, the next one is on May 22nd. Grab your tickets and we'll see you there. Thanks again and we'll see you soon.